take a picture of this screen, okay? We're going to eventually uh, do this problem, but we've got a couple things that we need to talk about first, all right? In this particular problem, all we're trying to do is find the length of side A round to the nearest tenth. Is this 12.5? Is this 12.5, yes, okay? So, uh, no, make this a, this is a new note, okay? Um, and then I want you to kind of analyze this triangle a little bit and see if you can come up with a way to find side A. So kind of contemplate that a little bit and try to set something up and see if you can do that. All right. So what's the problem here? There's not yeah, one. Yeah, there's um, angle. So, so I don't have um, more than one angle, okay? And the angle that is that we're given... We don't have the side that's opposite. That's what we're actually trying to find. Yeah. So whenever we would use law of sines, we would go through it and say, look, I just need that opposite side angle combination where we know both, but that doesn't exist here. Okay, I have this side, but I still don't know angle B. I have this side, but I don't know angle C. So when we're in a situation like this, um, where, and if you notice on the first line, I, I titled this Law of Cosines um, SAS. Anybody know what SAS stands for? Side. side, angle, side. So I'm given a side, the angle in between, and I'm given another side. So when I'm in a situation like this, where the angle is in between two given sides, I have, I'm forced to use Law of Cosines. And when I show you Law of Cosines, you're going to probably moan and groan a little bit because it's kind of ugly. Um, but I'm going to show you a way that I think makes it a little more simple, okay? So on this next, for, all right, so before we, the problem is we don't have the matching opposite side angle combination, so we have to use law of cosines, all right? And that's, if you want to write that down, go ahead and write that down. I talked about it already, but go ahead and write that down. Now, so here's, here's the first thing, okay? Law of cosines is a tool when we have any triangle, so this is similar format to what I used when I introduced law of sines. Okay, it helps us find missing sides of angle of any triangle, not just right triangles, when in this case you're given two sides and an included angle. Now when we go through this, and I'm only showing, I'm only going to be showing you part of law of cosines. I'm only going to be showing you the part of law of cosines that allows us to find a missing side. It is possible to use law of cosines to find a missing angle. We're not going to do that in this course. Okay. So we're only going to be focusing on finding a missing side. Now, here's the type of situation we're talking about. Okay, Where I've got two sides and then the included angle. So side, angle, side. And this is the moaning and groaning part here, all right? So in this case, we have angle A, we have sides B and C, we don't have side A. And here's what the law of cosines states. And the reality is we need to know the second line here, okay? In order to find side A, this is actually the law of cosines, but in order to get A by itself, you have to square root both sides. So get that down. Um, and then I will talk about an easier way to understand what's going on here. Here's what you need to know because on the next slide I'm going to show you, I give you all the different versions where you've got angle B and sides A and C or angle C and sides A and B. Even though I'm going to show you those, here's what you really need to keep in mind. Okay, Notice when I'm looking for that missing side, the opposite angle that goes with it is on the outside, okay? So these are gonna match up on the outside like that, the side and the angle. There's only one spot for an angle here, okay? And the, and the side opposite that angle will always be on the opposite side of the equal sign on the outside, okay? Everything here on the inside has to do with the sides that I'm given, okay? And if you said C squared plus B squared, that's fine. We can add in any order. If you said 2 times C times B, that would be fine too. Okay? Because you can multiply in any order. 
What's important to keep in mind here is this 2. A lot of times you will forget that 2. But in a way, this is a version of the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because we've got this a squared, b squared, c squared. Now the equal sign is going to be in different places and that kind of thing. But if you actually ever wanted to see a proof for law of cosines, it would look like something related to the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Now, so on the next slide, like I said, I'm going to show you the other versions if you're given angle B or if you're given angle C. But the format is essentially the same. The, the variables are going to be in different places. But the key thing to remember is that the angle that we're given and the opposite side that we're looking for will be on the outside, and the sides that we're given will be on the inside. Okay? And it's always plus and then minus, and it's always cosine. That's why it's law of cosines. All right? So on the next page, I, I'm going to show you, again, the other versions. Okay? Essentially the same idea. So in this case... Since I, I have these two sides and this angle, the side that I'm missing is side B. Given sides, outsides are the opposite side angle, opposites are the opposite side angle, and the insides are the sides that are given. Okay, So you can, I mean, again, you can look at all the different, all three of the different combinations, but if you keep in mind the idea that the side we're looking for is always going to be opposite on the outside of the angle that we're given and the sides that we're given are on the inside it, it will always follow that format okay so if that's the best way to think about it remember it so we're going to go through that. So that first problem that I gave you that we couldn't solve, now we can solve. So now let's go back to that and actually solve it, okay? And we'll work through this one together. So here, again, this is that same problem that we just we had before. So the other thing I want you to keep in mind, if you can find an opposite side angle combination where you know both, use law of sines. Law of sines is just easier than law of cosines, okay? In this case... We clearly don't have that. We have that side angle side situation. We don't have an opposite side angle combination. I am forced to use law of cosines. So what I want you to try to do is come up with side A. Okay, we know it's gonna look like that. And I want you to try to plug in the things in the right place and, and just stop. Don't type it in your calculator yet. Okay, so try that and let's see if you can set it up right. All right, so you, it looks like you set it up. Here's, here's what it should look like. Okay, now again, I'm gonna. It, if you put this as 32 and this is 21, it really doesn't matter. If you switch these around, it doesn't matter. What matters the most is that the angle goes with the cosine, and I'm looking for this side. Okay. Now, when you enter this in your calculator, you should do it all in one move. That will save you a lot of time and trouble. If you really want to multiply this out, or multiply this out, or multiply this out, that's fine. But do not multiply it out with cosine 40. You can literally enter all of this in your calculator at one time. And when you're doing your work, this, what's on the screen right now, is the amount of work I need to see. You don't need to simplify it beyond there, but I need to see this. I need to see what you're typing in your calculator, okay? Now, it wants it to the nearest tenth in this problem, okay? I didn't do You think you got the answer? 20.9. 20.9 what? Yeah. Units. How many agree with Evan? 20.9? Still working on it? I agree, okay? Uh, go ahead and keep... For those of you who haven't been able to get that yet, enter it in real quick. And so make sure you got it. Yes and no. No. That's the first part of what we're doing. The second part of what we're doing, because in this case we are only finding one side. The second part we have done before, and that is solving an entire triangle. Okay. The difference will be. Here's the here's the key thing. So let's look at the next problem. Okay. Here's the next problem that we're going to be doing. Okay. 
Again, this is solving the triangle. So go ahead and take a picture of that, and then we'll talk about how to work through all of this. In reality here, I still don't have the opposite side angle combination. I have side, angle, side, okay? So I'm forced to use law of cosines to find side B. But here's the nice thing. Once I find side B, I will have the opposite side angle combination, and I can go away from law of cosines and go back to law of sines. Okay, now, so go ahead for right now and find side B, rounding to the nearest tenth. And then, before you try to find the missing angles, there's, there's a little bit of a trick that I want to show you before you get too far ahead. So, just find side B for right now. It's good so far. Okay, so this is your setup. That's what you should have had. Okay, and then. B is 4.2 units, and most of you look like you had that. Raise your hand if you had that. Okay, good. Now, here's the caveat. Because at this point, now that I know this side, and I have the opposite side angle combination, I can go back to law of, co or law of sines. Okay? But, I want you to be strategic about what angle we find next, because that's all that's left, angle A and angle C. Okay? And that goes back to what we did yesterday. I want you to find the smaller angle first. The reason being is sometimes what can happen with law of cosines is there are multiple answers to some of our triangles that work. If you find the smaller angle first, we will avoid that situation. Okay? I don't want to get too far into that. Just trust me on this one. So once you find side B, and if I'm looking, because in, in any case where I have to use law of cosines, I'm only ever given one angle. So when I find that third side, the only thing left is always going to be two angles. And you can tell which angle is smaller just by looking at the picture most of the time. Okay, Which angle is smaller, A or C? C. So we want to find angle C first. And, again, we're going to use law of sines. So go ahead and set that one up to find angle C and solve for angle C, just like we did on the worksheet yesterday. Okay, so here's your At least what you, what you should have had. Sine of 36 over 4.2. C is the smaller angle. The side opposite C is 5. How many had it set up correctly? Okay. So then we solve for C the way we did yesterday. Again, keep in mind, whenever I'm looking for an angle, you're going to have to use the inverse function. Okay. Raise your hand if you have an answer for angle C already. Okay. I'll give you another minute to finish that up. Remember when it says angles to the nearest degree, that means we are rounding to the nearest whole number. Nearest whole number which will affect angle C, which then also affects angle A. Okay. What'd you get for angle C? Yeah, Robert? 44. 44 degrees. degrees. So, here's your setup. Inverse sine of 5 sine 36 divided by 4.2. C does, in fact, equal 44 degrees. Again, rounding to the nearest degree. So then, in order to find angle A, because that's the only thing left, what do I do? Subtract 180, 180, 180 minus 36 Right, so 36 plus 44 is 80, so 80 minus that, which is 100 degrees. And there are my three missing is parts. That it? That's it. So I underlined them there. Angle C, angle A, side B, and now I've solved that triangle. So, initially it starts off with new stuff, law of cosines. Okay. Then it moves into what we did on the worksheet yesterday finding a missing angle, and we use just what we know about triangles for the last angle, okay? So it's combining all, everything that we've learned over the last week or so, okay? Any questions?